Sometimes, when closing the ER32 tuck, I think that uh, I need three hands, one for the tuck, one for the 70 key, and one for holding the tool. After a few attempts, I thought of a rotary system. For safety reasons, however, the spoon that blocks the spindle must remain in position in order not to accidentally collide with the rotation of the spindle. For this reason I decided to make a block for the spindle, so has to use one hand for closing and one for the tool. The available space was very little, because next to the spindle I also have the drip dozer already installed some time ago. So I had to think of a system capable of releasing a block for the spindle dragging tooth. Given the height of the block, 82 mm, I had to buy a longer drill than the standard ones, and in any case unloading the chips during machining was not easy at all. I then created the central slot for the block spoon to pass through in two phases to make it as rectangular as possible. Of course I also rounded the edge of the spoon so they don't collide with the walls of the block. I definitely moved the safety switch because I no longer use it for the reasons of space. There is still a safety stop on the front of the machine. I thought that the pin should rotate on the bronze, on two bushings, not directly on the aluminium. And for this reason I use my UPE free boring head, always very precise and obtain the seat of the bushing. It was not very easy to do the centering. For this reason I made several attempts observing the rotation of the tool around the hole. The effort in rotation would certainly have been supported by the aluminium. Furthermore, given the manufacturing, the aluminium would give me the possibility to work it in a short time. I fix the bushings with strong Loctite, the one used to lock the bearings. I then built the central pin, using my sander device to get within tolerance. To drill the holes on the cutter head on my milling machine, I use a barrel guide that I made a few years ago to keep the drill bits at 90 degrees as much as possible. And then I tap the holes with my M4 tap and running a depth of 20 mm. On the head of the aluminium block I obtain the negative of the steel plate so that the aluminium block rests on the plate, increasing the resistance. The block rests on the plate that fixes my drop dispenser, therefore there are four screws that resist in rotation, two for the aluminium block and two for the steel plate. The two bushings that I built are totally made from solid of a 21 mm diameter bar. The thickness of the bushings was 1.5 mm for each side, more than sufficient for the few rotation that the central shaft have to be. After fixing the bushings, I had to pick up the shaft to make it turn precisely. So I use my lead sander to eliminate a few chains 
and tau obtain a precision fit. As you can be seen from the rotation, the result obtained was truly satisfactory. In fact, the block rotates very precisely on the shaft just built. My late sander proved to be a very nice and useful device and after making this uh, small adjustment I then cut uh, to the finish length uh, the shaft and so the central shaft was finished and ready to be installed on my aluminum block. The fit uh, with the bushing was really perfect. I use a very good steel to make this shaft because it will bring in rotation the spoon. I then move on to the construction of the spoon. Give the large amount of material to be removed, I decide to use my grinder and eliminate as much material as possible and then I mounted the block on my milling machine. After making the central hole of the spoon, I then installed the spoon on my divider to round off the edges and therefore allow the rotation of the piece inside the aluminium more easily. Rounding the edge was not so easy because the steel was of quality. The creation of the free planes was very important in order to obtain free positions of the spoon, one of which for the passage of the assembly screw. The spoon is fixed in relation to the central shaft with two headless M4 screw, more than enough for the necessary effort. I then glue a piece of paper to be able to round off the aluminium block. Given the position of the fitting I have to work with both the y-axis end wheel and the divider end wheel. Rounding the edge of the block was not for aesthetic reasons, but because the spoon must be able to rotate as it rises and block the spindle. After building a simple spring guide, I test a quick assembly to see if the spoon stay in the free positions. And after check this, I then drill both the bushings and the shaft in order to pass the screw. This was possible because the spoon stops in an intermediate position thanks to the three planes that I worked before. The drilling diameter was very important. Not too small to not get the screw stuck inside not too big to completely cut the central shaft. The strange workmanship that you see is the result of moving the piece being processed. I decide to use the piece anyway, even with these strange carvings. I then built the brass knob. I used my modified boring head to create a fitting. I then fit the knob into the divider head and I made 8 slots, each at 45 degree from the next. I then drilled and created 2 and 5 holes to lock the knob in place with respect to the 2 holes in the central shaft. I prefer to make 8 slots and not 6 in order to make the best use of the pole handle. Obviously this required more work 
and attention too. But I really like the final result. For making the knob, I use a 20 all disc, making 11 turns and 5 holes for each cut. The ratio of my dividing head is 1 to 90. After making the M5 holes, I made some exterior sprucing work before the final assembly. The final assembly show how convenient the screw hidden inside the aluminium block are. Also because I have no possibility of fixing them externally. The spring has been shortened two times. Try to make it as hard as possible, but not too much, otherwise I would no longer have been able to mount the central shaft. The rotation test and the screw passage test were once again successful, as can be seen from the image. And after this, now the lock test. I then mounted the aluminium block on my cutter head, coloring the spoon red because it is a sensitive component and therefore very, very important. The locking works very well and resist the opening and closing torque very well. I was really impressed by the stiffness of the aluminum block. The result is exactly what I was hoping to get at the beginning of the project. But now we have reached the end and after having reassembled everything I really hope you enjoy my video and see you the next time. AB Shop.